Sorry about that. So it's going to be negative 3 minus 8 uh, squared plus 1 minus minus 1 squared. Why am I doing this is so that I can apply the theorem of Pythagoras again to calculate the length of tangent T P. So that works out to be the square root of, let's put this in the calculator, um, the square root of, open brackets, negative 3 minus 8 squared Negative 3 minus 8 squared uh, plus 2 squared. That gives you 5 root 5. Is that correct? Right, so let's go 5 root 5. 5 squared root 5. So I'm going to calculate TP by using Pythagoras. So TP squared is equal to um, 5 root. The 5 root 5 or 5 root 3? 5 root 5 uh, squared minus 5 squared. Okay. Let's put that in the calculator. Probably going to give you 20 or something. So that's 5 root 5 squared minus 5 squared. If you 100, the squared to 100 is 10. Okay, you all agree with that? Okay, so the length of TP is going to give you 10 units. Let's look at the next question. So the next question says, in the diagram below, two circles are drawn. The centers, a cent, um, circle with center O touches, circle with center B externally, which means to say on the outside. The equation of the circle center O is given by x squared plus y squared equal to 45. So this is going to be x squared plus y squared equal to 45. Which means to say from O to that point there is going to be the square root of 45 or 3 root 5. Okay? Then we are told that um, the equation of say, a circle center B is given by x squared x minus 2 P all squared plus y plus P squared is equal to 2. Which means to say that from that point 2 to B on the point of contact to be, it's going to be the root of 20 or 2 root 5. Okay. And B lies in the fourth quadrant. So what significance does that, is that to us if B is in the fourth quadrant? is meaning to say that X has to be positive while the Y is negative. Okay. And we must just take that into account then. The question says determine the value of P. Okay. Determine the value of P. So now at this point, B. What's wrong? So B's coordinate is simply going to be 2P, two, uh, two 2P two and negative P. Okay? So again, we can work with the distance formula here. So we know that o, OB squared is equal to the square root of, I'm going to go with the distance formula. It's going to be uh, now the coordinates of uh, zero, um, of the origin is zero and zero, so it's two p minus zero squared plus uh, minus p. So I can't get it in there. O b squared is equal to the square root of two p minus zero squared plus minus p minus zero squared. So that's simply going to give us a square root of 5p squared. Okay, because I have 2p all squared is 4p squared, and negative p squared is positive p squared, which gives you 5p squared. But we also worked out that OB is also equal to the square root of 45 plus the square root of 20. Okay, so uh, square root of 45, uh, 45 is uh, 3 root 5. Uh, plus uh, 2 root 5, which is 5 root 5. Okay? So that is OB, and that is OB. So in other words, I can see the two equal to each other. Not so. So 
I can say therefore 5 root 5 is equal to the square root of 5 p all squared. So if I square both sides, that's going to give us 25 times 5, which is 125, is equal to 5 p squared. So I divide both sides by 5, so p squared is equal to 25, the square root of that is plus minus 5. So if you're looking at uh, where b is situated, and they told us it's in the fourth quadrant, so therefore b has to be that, x value must be positive, so p has to be positive. So 2 times 5 is 10, and um, if p is 5, it's going to give you negative 5, which makes sense it to be in the fourth quadrant with those coordinates, okay? If it was probably in any other coordinate, I would probably consider the, the negative 5 instead of the positive 5. Right, people, the, um, the proof for the formula for the sum of terms of the geometric progression, you'll find that in the description box below. So that brings us now to question 4.2, which is our um, sequence and series section of work. All right, the question says find a formula for the nth term of the series. You're given the series 11 plus 11 over 3 plus 11 over 9. Do you watch your A value here? 11. What's your R value? A third. How do you get the third? It's going to be T2 over T1 or T3 over T2. So find the formula for the nth term, so Tn is equal to AR n minus 1. Your A value is 11, your R is a third, n minus 1. That's your general term as required. Okay. Let's go to the next question. It says find the 64th term of the series. 64th term, so it's a say in T, 64. If I see an n, I put the 64. So it's going to be 11 into 1 over 3, raised to the 64 minus 1. So put that in a calculator. So it's 11 into 1 over 3, raised to the exponent 63. Okay. So you can write it as 9 comma 6 1 times 10 to the minus 30. Or you just write it as, since that number is fairly large, I just say 11 um, into uh, 1 over 3 raised to the exponent 60. That's it, that's a plus. Okay, that's enough. Otherwise, if you want to write it in, uh, in, the, in, in that um, yeah, um, scientific notation, you may as well. Okay. In the next question, in uh, 4.3, the question says calculate the smallest value for n for which. Now, what does sigma stand for? The sum of, not so. So, in other words, the sum of has to be greater than 7,000. In other words, okay. People, where do we start? We start with the first three terms. So, we start with k is equal to 1. How many terms are here? The number of terms is the starting point minus uh, the ending point minus the starting point plus one. Ending point minus the starting point plus one. The ending point is n minus one plus one is going to give you n. So the number of terms is basically n in this case. Okay. That is just we normally do that at the back of our head. Especially if it doesn't start with the one, then we added we needed to check what the way it starts and so on. Okay. So uh, we start with the first three terms. So wherever k is, I put a 1. So it's going to be 2 over 9 in a times um, 3 to the 1 minus 2 plus. And I say 2 over 9, so I increase it every time by 1. So it's going to be times 3 to the 2 minus 2 plus. 2 over 9 into 3 times 3 minus 2 and so on. Okay. So uh, that is simply going to give us 2 over 27 plus. That's that going to cancel, give you 2 over 9 plus 2 over 3 plus and so Okay. So because the sigma stands for the sum of, I'm going to work out the sum of geometric progression. Okay. So the sum of the arithmetic progression is going to be is n is equal to a r n minus 1 over r minus 1. Okay. 
So that simply will give you 2 over uh, 2 over 27 into R. What's my R value? 3 um, to the exponent in which I want to calculate minus 1 over 3 minus 1 has to be greater than 7,000. I know some of you also just look at... Okay, it's not going to work in this case. But anyway. So, what is 3 minus 2? Uh, 3 minus uh, 1 is 2. And 2 over 27 divided by 2 is going to be 1 over 27. So, 1 over 27 into 3 to the n minus 1 has to be greater than 7,000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by, by uh, 1 over 27, so I go 7,000 divided by 1 over 27. Okay, that gives us an answer of 189,000. Okay, so 3n minus 1 is greater, um, 3n minus 1 has to be greater than um, 189,000. Now we take the 1 over the equal sign becomes plus 1. So it's 189,001. 189,001. Okay. So at this point we can then see uh, what that number can be written as. So you just shift, factorize. So in this case, we need to use logs, okay? So what we do on the side is we say 3 to the n equals 189,001. We log both sides, so it gives log 3 to the exponent n is equal to log 189,001. That n comes forward, so it's n log 3 is equal to log 189,001. So I divide by log 3 both sides. So I'm going to say um, fraction log 189,000. That is over log um, 3. Have you, guys, uh, have you guys been exposed to logs already? No? Financial match will only use log, isn't it? Okay, it's probably still coming. So it's zero. Uh, five something. Okay. So at eleven comma, if it's at eleven, then it will be less than one hundred and eighty-nine thousand and one. Can you see that? You can put plug it in the calculator and check for yourself. Okay. Otherwise, the smallest value for n it has to be twelve. Therefore, n is equal to, or you can say that S12 has to be greater than 7. Is that correct? Right. But again, more of logs when we get there. So in this exam, I don't think you guys will have some logs. Okay. Question 5, 5.1. In the figure below, we are told the triangle ABC has D and E on BC. Okay, so there's some information that we need to fill in on the diagram. So here in the figure below, right, so DB is going to be 10 centimeters. DC, which is this length from there to there, is going to be 15 centimeters. 